y'all, it's Kayla. So, um, this is an impromptu video, as you can probably tell by the state of my eyebrows. But, um, I did not plan to make this video at all, but I really wanted to make it. I was inspired to make it. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna post it, but I think it would be therapeutic for me to make it. I wanna talk about how I gained all the weight that I did and why I decided to lose it. I want to warn you though, there will be mention of eating disorders and abuse in this video. I'm gonna try my best to gloss over it. I don't wanna give too in-depth details, but if hearing about eating disorders and abuse will set you back in your own progress, I would say not to watch this video just because I don't want to be a source of any negativity. I don't want to set you back in any kind of way. So trigger warning, abuse and Ednos mentions. My first semester of college, there was this girl in my class that I just could not stop looking at. She was bomb to me. She looked like Darlene Connor, and I love Roseanne. Roseanne was the type of show I could watch all the time. She looked just like Darlene. I could tell she played soccer and softball, la la la. She looked miserable every time I saw her, and I made it my goal to make her laugh. I would come into class with jokes, with pickup lines, and before you know it, we were kind of like in a clique, me and a couple other people. She was always sitting with us, but most of the time she did not talk to me. Um, but I knew that she enjoyed being around me. On the last day of that semester, I made a bunch of cookies for my friends because I was the type to always be baking something. That's just who I've been my whole life. And I made cookies and I passed them out to the teacher, my friends, and then she was about to leave. And I was like, wait, here are some cookies. And later I found out, like she said, she demolished the cookies. But it turns out she was very miserable because she was suffering from a very intense eating disorder. So um, fast forward a tiny bit longer. The next semester, she ended up being in one of my classes again. Towards the end of that semester, we started dating. Um, I was 17 when I met her, 18 when we were dating. Had my first kiss at 18. She was my first kiss. She was my first love. She was my first everything, everything. Um, hindsight is 2020. So um, I didn't realize that at the beginning of our relationship, it was really not healthy. We didn't eat together for the first couple months of our relationship. And then that took a dramatic change. Um, basically, I'm just gonna say it like this. I learned how to binge from our relationship. It got to the point where we would always, always just go to Kroger. We would get a big old pack of cupcakes. Um, she is actually officially the one that nicknamed me Cupcake. I still identify with it, so I keep it around. But um, we would eat cupcakes. We would just smash on all different kinds of stuff all the time. Um, so we went from never eating together to eating all the time together and we both gained weight together. But we were happy. I thought we were happy. We, you know, we got the new relationship chubs. So we both got chubby and um, I was, I was already heavier than she was. So I was more than chubby, but we got chubby. Around this time that we both gained weight, that's when little things started to happen that should have clued me into the fact that this relationship was not safe for me to be in. She never wanted me to go out with my friends. And at this point, I just started going out and partying and having my own life because I was in college. So um, I started going out and doing things and she was not having it. Um, a little bit after that, the physical abuse started. This was a very, very abusive relationship, um, verbally, emotionally, physically, and sexually. It was a very abusive relationship. Um, and this relationship definitely made me into the person that I am today. Um, and I don't think that's completely in a good way. When you're 17, 18, 19, 20, you're still finding yourself and you're still developing as a person. And I wasn't able to do that. One aspect of the abuse that I did not see coming and I did not know was even abuse was that she controlled everything that I put into my mouth. And not to say that she didn't want me to be fat and not to say that she starved me. It was the exact opposite. She fed me all the time. Um, she would make sure that I had a bunch of food, a bunch of junk food. We would go to the drive throughs all the time. She would go to the donut place around here and get me like six donuts at a time and made sure that I ate them all. Um, now this wasn't both of us. She was feeding me and not feeding herself. I just wanna like, I don't know. When it got really bad, she told me point blank, 
you have to be the fat one in the relationship. Um, and so she made sure of that. It got to the point where I was started to feel very uncomfortable in my body. And she told me that if I ever lost weight, that she would break up with me. And you may be wondering, what the fuck? Like, you should have been like, fuck you, bye. When you're in an abusive relationship, when you're being manipulated, when your self-worth is like nothing, the last thing you want to do is lose what you think is the only person that's there for you. Meanwhile, I had alienated all of my friends. I alienated all of my family. It was just me and her. And I thought that was all I had. I didn't think it was going to get any better. And sometimes, I mean, to be honest, sometimes I didn't think that she would ever let me leave. So I kept eating and I kept gaining weight. And, um she kept not eating i'm done talking about the relationship but basically all you need to know is that it was three years long we were engaged at one point we talked about kids it was very 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 abusive um i didn't think that i would be able to get out now i ended up getting out in the form of the disney college program and uh, one of my friends was applying so i applied too so that i could get out of the situation that i was in when I was at Disney, I was very depressed because, you know, I had just come out of this abusive relationship and we had still been in communication because, like, we were still dating when I, like, left. And that's when I was online looking at the L Word stuff and then I found Auto Straddle and I found A Camp. Relationships over. But the one thing that was not over was the pattern of disordered eating that I had developed in that relationship. I developed an addiction to the food. Um... Yeah, she was making me eat the food and she wanted to fatten me up like she was like a witch and I was Gretel. But I started to need the food. I started to eat it for comfort. And so that didn't stop after the relationship. Like after the relationship ended, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go back to normal life and not eat six donuts at a time. No, I had to keep eating six donuts at a time because I don't know. <laughs> I was addicted. I was attached. My disordered eating was probably just a little blip, a blip on the radar when I was a teenager. But after this relationship, it was crazy. It was crazy. After that relationship, I found auto straddle. I embraced my feminist side. I want strength and empowerment for all women, all types of women. And I'm also body positive, but I'm like, you know what? I'm cute. I can do whatever I want. All bodies are beautiful. I don't have to be a certain size to be beautiful. So I try my hardest to be the confident, hot, fat girl. I was in mini skirts and heels and crop tops all the time. You couldn't tell me anything. I know for a fact that it helped other women see me doing my thing. And that's why it was so hard for me to decide to lose weight. But I had been uncomfortable. I think the real reason that I knew I was never going to be comfortable at the weight that I was, was because it wasn't my choice. I think it would have been different if I had just gained weight or if I had like a health issue that made me gain weight. I think it would have been easier to embrace it but every time that I tried to embrace my size, I just felt like I was trying to be the person that she wanted me to be. And I think that if I had never gone through that trauma of that relationship, I think that I would have probably been around the same size that I am now. I don't think I would have gotten to almost 300 pounds. The cycle was never ending. The binging and the self-loathing and I'm gonna admit, I could just hear her telling me I was gonna be the fat one and I had to be the fat one and I was always gonna be the fat one and no one's gonna want me and if I lost weight, she would leave me and I'd be by myself. I think I like internalized that. There was a moment that I realized I would never truly be happy at 280 pounds because I wasn't being me, I wasn't being myself. There was no way, there was no way that I was going to embrace the extra pounds on my body because it wasn't put there, it wasn't put there with my consent, you know? Like it was, 
I gained weight to protect myself. Um, and then it was no longer protecting myself. It was to like medicate myself, to forget the pain, to forget the trauma, to forget my past. Taking all that into consideration, I decided to lose weight. It was really hard to decide to lose weight because like I said, I think all sizes are beautiful and women are beautiful. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not gonna hide my body, this is who I am. But I truly could not, I couldn't accept myself. I couldn't accept myself because I wasn't letting go of what happened to me at all. I just didn't feel like I could truly be myself if I was still wearing the very physical evidence of the worst experience of my life, the worst three years of my life. Um, it would have been different if I gained the weight in a different way, but <laughs> the weight that I gained is a direct result of the abuse that I went through. And I just felt like I could never, never be, ne I, can, I feel like I can never truly be Kayla if I was still holding on to the past. I still struggle with binging, I really do. And that is what's made my weight loss journey so difficult. You don't just develop an addiction to food and binging and it just goes away. It doesn't happen like that. So I struggle with binging almost every day. Almost every day I struggle, but um, I definitely think it was worth it to make this change. Um, I'm still on a journey, on a journey to self-discovery and happiness and self-love, but I think that talking, to, talking about this is going to help push me, help propel me forward. And I don't even know if I'm posting this, this could just be for me, but I definitely feel different. I feel like I've just woken up out of a six year coma. I want to be the only one influencing my decisions. I want to be in charge of my own life. I want to be in charge of what goes into my mouth. I want to be in charge of what size that I am. I want to be in charge of who I talk to, what parties I go to, who I have sex with and when. I want to be in charge of all of that. And my weight was a big thing in the way of me taking charge of my life. And I had to take it by the neck. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's my story. Um, I don't really have anything else to say, except go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I post videos about wellness, weight loss, my journey to self-love and happiness and other random stuff that I'm doing. Like this video. I know if you like it, it won't mean that, yay, you went through this shit. Like this video for support. I will take every thumbs up as a hug from all of you. And just know that I'm hugging you back. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later. Bye.